podcast. It's a very sad statement. I, I don't know how many of you have been reading books into masculinity and femininity, like reading the book, The Way of the Superior Man. If you read books like this, if you really start learning about masculine energy and feminine energy, your eyes will fucking split open and you'll be like, holy fuck, I've been living life the wrong way. No wonder I've been dating such hostile, cold, masculine women so far. I don't know about you, but fuck me is feminine women are so fucking attractive i this is like it's like my new type you know people ask like oh like ass or tits and like what's your type in a woman bro my answer is so fucking simple now my answer what's my attraction to a woman feminine boom that's all i have to explain and what's interesting i've, I've dated a fair amount of women i've slept with a fair amount of women this is one of the the very few women i can actually say that i'm with now who's actually way more into a feminine energy i said she's probably 90 percent feminine the only time she's in the 10 percent masculine is when i leave her to for example like focus on something like making dinner but even then that's probably in feminine because it's quite submissive and serving to me we have a very good dynamic very and your comments about eve and i've noted this i would say in my own marriage is that imagine that i have a conflict with my wife that's akin to the kind of conflict that we're just describing and we want to mediate that conflict and one way is for her to submit to me, and another is for her, me to submit to her, and a third is that we can compromise, but a fourth is that be, as a consequence of the dialogue between us, which would be the masculine proclivity to impose order and the feminine proclivity to speak for chaos and multiplicity, we can come up with a third solution that transcends both our problems and that offers a union that's preferable to, to compromise and certainly preferable to slavery and submission. 